So lately I've been doing quite a lot of on location work um, and in this video I want to share this all with you. What up friends, Liron here, thank you for joining me in another video. So, uh, I did a lot of on location paintings recently and some of those uh, I'm sure you've seen maybe on uh, Instagram or here if I showed, but I don't think, I did, didn't show them yet uh, on the channel actually. So I, I just, here are a few of the, this one's upside down, <laughs> here are a few of the paintings I've been working on. Um, and it's really interesting because this is like a whole new learning curve for me and I learned so much from uh, making these um, so I just want to go over them and just kind of review them and talk about what I was experiencing while I was working on them uh, and on, on the side here I will uh, just add a few pictures showing the actual process because I did take pictures of it so they'll be running to the right um, showing just the different stages of the painting okay they aren't necessarily gonna correlate to what I say but I just want you to get uh, a look of some of the processes here okay so let's get started so let's start with this one which um, this is the first painting I did uh, after moving to the new place um, and you can see it's funny, the drawing itself isn't that accurate, the building is leaning towards this direction. Um, but I am very pleased with the result. Um, a lot of it has to do with uh, the way I was able to capture the light coming, especially here uh, from this uh, power line, the power lines that are running in this pole here. Uh, onto the building casting the shadow. Uh, there's this area that's in the shadow and uh, I think I got a bit lucky with this subject uh, because it was like the perfect uh, reference. Sometimes you just see a scene and you know it's gonna be an amazing painting. It just lets you, gives you immediately that vision of what you want to make out of it. Okay, so this was one of the examples uh, of that kind of thing, that kind of experience. Um, I just started uh, working on it, uh, making a first wash that just covers everything, um, just blue for the sky, then I used a bit of a quinacridone on burnt uh, orange, or burnt sienna, sorry, I actually used um, the schminke for this one, so the burnt sienna looks kind of like quinacridone on burnt orange, but in any case, so there was the blue here for the sky, then the uh, sort of uh, burnt, uh, quin uh, burnt sienna, uh, then new gamboge, a bit of green for the trees, and just cover everything up. Then I came back and started um, accentuating some of the shadows and the different shapes, um, connecting as many as possible. So uh, the trees are connected to the ground here, just to give a sense of unity. Uh, I find that this is really important. Uh, so I find that the first wash is something that I kind of be I'm beginning to master. Uh, and on, on location work especially, I kind of know how to do that and get it to be um, fairly uh, unified and, and good looking. Uh, with this example, it was a good one. I did mess up a bit on the first wash, but you can't see it because it's covered up with some other uh, layers. So that's the first one I wanted to show you. Um, I did also this one, and with this, I have to mention, like, this was the best initial wash that I had. It just worked perfectly. There is some bleeding from the sky to the buildings, and I like it. I like the way it looks. And here I learned one of the most important insights I've had recently, uh, and it has to do with matching values. So what happened was, and I wasn't, I didn't realize I was doing it, and this is really important, so you want to pay attention to that. Um, I, when I mix the, the, the second wash, okay, um, I kind of test it on a test page, and what I'm looking to see is, when I put it on the test page, does it look as dark as the reference I'm looking at? But this is wrong, and let me explain to you why, because I already have a wash here. So when I put it on a white paper, I just see the way it looks, and it looks dark enough. But once I put it on the painting, I actually glaze it over something that already exists here, and it makes it darker. So what the bottom line is that my mid-tones consistently turn out a little darker than I want and now I figured out why and it's it sounds like such a simple concept I mean if you glaze over another layer you know it's gonna be a little darker than it seems because it's glazed over another layer and I didn't realize that I, I mean I probably if you'd ask me I know I'd know how to answer it but but only when I did this and and this this midtones here this should be midtones they were super dark and I, I was trying they should be more like this maybe uh, here uh, and I and I then I suddenly realized that when I calculated the darkness, 
I calculated it over a white piece of paper or I was looking at the palette to see how thick the paint is and how dark it is but I didn't realize that once I glaze it it's gonna look much darker so what happened was that and I and I went back and looked at older paintings and I saw this consistently happening so now I know better so now I know how to do this uh, one other thing that I would um, and, and it's just a huge insight by the way it's a huge huge insight uh, that I will take with me onwards um, it just this is a completely separate learning curve it's on location from observation uh, trying to trying my new loose style so it's just a big challenge and I love it I really enjoy it and, and I learn new things it's like I'm starting watercolor just now um, so uh, this tree here is another thing I would correct a bit first the shape it's a bit flat looking second just the negative painting doesn't work for me here um, probably because I didn't merge it well enough and I should have probably made it a little simpler like abstract it a little more just go tack, 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 like this and just get some kind of a very random leafy shape uh, instead of a rounded thing. I need to get rid of my rounded trees. It just doesn't work for me. Uh, and this is it. And then when the darkest darks came, they were also a bit too dark uh, because this previous wash was too dark and it's just like a, a, a continuous error or continuous mistake. Um, so this is one huge thing that I learned uh, from this painting. And then we have another one. This one I actually did today. Uh, there was this sort of... Um, juice place that uh, they just mash the, the fruit on, on, on the spot and just create really cool juices. This one's wrong, <laughs> I just, it's all over the place. Uh, the center of attention was supposed to be this sort of uh, awning, I don't know how you'd call it. Um, it just doesn't really work. Uh, I should have covered things much more evenly in the first wash. So you can see you can mess up the first wash as well. Uh, and this is what happens. Um, but I did learn quite a bit from this one as well um, on just really how important it is to cover everything up or just leave it and let it dry and then continuing to fill in the gaps. Um, this is just all of these three are huge learning experiences. You'll notice I'm using kind of a similar uh, color palette for all of them. Uh, it's basically the French Ultramarine and the um, a uh, new gamboge, some quinacridone um, rose or magenta that I used here and I actually love the way it looks. Uh, the greens I mixed just with the blue and the yellow. Uh, so it's sort of my way of approaching uh, this and it's actually really good for the area uh, I stay at because, or I live at, because the sky is kind of really happy and bright like this. The buildings have this yellowy feeling to them. Um, the shadows are deep, the, the trees are kind of olive green in, in many places, so I find that this sort of triad works really well for me. Um, and I'm really excited because starting next week I'll finally be able to devote more time. I'll bring all of my uh, recording gear and I will I can devote time to actually recording outside. So what we're gonna have is sort of the art adventures outdoors, so I will record a lot uh, of contents outdoors, uh, maybe also vlogs. Uh, but also the processes. So I'll put the the tripod with the, the sort of easel to paint and then I'll have the camera recording everything so that you can see this and I'll, I'll sort of give an interpretation of what I'm doing. You'll be able to see the reference. It's just going to be really cool and it actually reminds me of the, um, the DVD I purchased of Alvaro Castanet in the, the APC. Uh, a EPC I think films it's called it's the company that produces these films and I thought it could be really cool to produce one here uh, because they're they're all for like they, they cost money it's like five painting processes um, so I just think it can be cool to make uh, one or two of these and see how it works out uh, when you can actually see the reference in front of you and it's not just an image or a picture I put on the side here but it's actually like in front of us I can pick the camera and show it to you uh, so anyway, yeah, you can see I'm fairly very excited about just going out there and recording the process as well. Um, feeling like I'm starting to get the hang of uh, working on location and interpreting what I see. It's just, as I mentioned like a million times in this video, it's a whole new learning curve. Uh, I hope you will get to be a part of my journey in, this, in that sense um, and that you will enjoy it because it's really something new for me as well. And this is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you still haven't, if you're just lurking around watching videos. Also subscribe. I'm posting uh, daily videos for now. I'm really enjoying it. Um, I am pretty sure that um, by the end of the year, maybe around the beginning of uh, 2018, I will make a change to the schedule. I'm not yet uh, exactly sure what I want to make or what kind of change I want to make. 
uh, but I think I will. Uh, maybe make it a little more uh, organized schedule or something like this. Uh, maybe specific days for specific topics. I'm um, still not sure exactly what to do and the frequency I think will stay similar. Anyway, we'll see about that. We still have like six months left or maybe four. Yeah, four, <laughs> four months left, something like this. Uh, so anyway, this is it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you again in another one tomorrow.